Okay. You want to do it together again? It's a little smile. Yeah. It might be a little giggle. <laughs> might be them even blinking their eyelashes at you for some of our children. You're really in the presence of God. Okay, and look at you. Your hands are moving and everything now, huh? Oh, you big sweetheart. <laughs> mm. Right? Yeah. <laughs> when a need is seen in a society and no one is taking care of it, then who steps up to try to respond to that need? And I think the Sisters of Charity have done that. Caring for children who cannot advocate for themselves at all. We started to discharge and we found out, we went back that 30% of our kids that we discharged passed away in a little over a year. Wow. Everybody should have a right to have a joyful life. But if this works and it goes well, this could be the example for the rest of the United States and possibly around the world. That would be the dream. This is the Elizabeth Seton Children's Center, located in Yonkers, New York, and is home to 169 children with severe medical conditions who need constant complex care. Like Stephanie, who was born with spina bifida and has lived through countless painful and often risky surgeries. I get down sometimes, but you know, life is life. And, I, and I'm dealing with it. I'm just blessed that I'm, I'm alive, I'm healthy, I'm strong. Because you like to focus on the positive and the good things. I like to focus on the positive, never the negative. Wow. If we could all learn to do that, it would be a great thing. Yes. For these children, this is their home. Many need care 24-7, need walking aids, feeding tubes, ventilators, and devices to help them communicate. Pat Tercy is the CEO of the center. When you first walked in through the doors, what was your first impression? Seeing, you know, little children that had these unbelievable um, disabilities that they overcame and they didn't know they were disabled. When you say unbelievable disabilities, what kind of conditions do the children have here? It's a full range. So some are genetic disorders, some are um, traumas, car accidents. Um, we have kids with cerebral palsy. We have kids with neuromuscular um, um, degenerative diseases. You know, we've have also, you know, from neglect or abuse, shaken baby syndrome, um, and left them, you know, cognitively severely impaired. The center has state-of-the-art facilities to care for these children with the best doctors and nurses. And the cost of caring for each child is around $1,600 a day, which is funded by New York State and the federal government, as most of the children here are from families on the poverty line. And without this center would find it almost impossible to give their child the complex and constant care that they need. There just isn't possible for a family member to be able to support their child at home with these kind of conditions. Sophie was born um, with a genetic disorder. There's a duplication on one of her chromosomes, so it affected all of her development. Sophie is 16 and has been living here for five years now. Her mother is Renee Kelly. Like you walk in the doors here, and I always think of this when I walk in, those doors, the automatic doors close behind you and it's like a hug. And I just, I feel that. And then the chapel is right there and there's a statue of Elizabeth Seton. And I just feel all that right in the entryway when I come in here. You heard Renee mention the statue of St. Elizabeth Seton, which you see the moment you walk through the entrance. She grew up in the early 19th century in New York and was the foundress of the Sisters of Charity. Sister Dorothy Metz and Sister Carol Barnes are two of the five Sisters of Charity on the board of the center. Who was Elizabeth Seton? Elizabeth Seton was a very unusual woman. She was born to a wealthy family in New York. Her father was a surgeon, but she always had a care for the poor. A convert to Catholicism, she saw children in poverty and dire need in New York, and so founded the Sisters of Charity to answer their needs. 
They started schools, orphanages, hospitals, and many of those places exist today. Well, I think the uh, basic charism of the Sisters of Charity is love. It's that care, that compassionate care. Caring for children who cannot advocate for themselves at all. Now, the center is facing a new challenge. In the past, children with these types of medical conditions rarely lived past the age of about 21. But now, with advancements in medicine and care, children are living into adulthood. But the problem is, once a child reaches the age of 21 in the United States, they are no longer eligible for medical funding at a centre like this, and are normally transferred to an elderly care home or another institution. What happens to the children when they reach that kind of critical age and when they have to leave this facility? We started to discharge and we found out, we went back, that 30% of our kids that we discharged passed away in a little over a year. Wow. And the state rules were hard and fast. So you could stay through your 21st birthday, but you could not stay once you hit 22. They would not fund us. They would not fund us. This is known as the aging out problem and is a sad reality that Pat and the staff have been trying to deal with after giving these children the best of care for so many years. There is a time, and I'm not saying that some of our kids wouldn't naturally die, I've talked about that, but certainly not like this. So the Elizabeth Seton Children's Center now has an ambitious plan. The state of New York has granted them permission to build a young adult center that would care for the young adults with medical complications after the age of 21. It will be the first of its kind in the United States, but Pat and the center have to raise the initial capital of $30 million. Does it seem overwhelming, thinking of that figure that you have to raise? Yes, it is overwhelming. And we, because of who we care for, raising money is a, more of a challenge. Um, our families, like I shared, are not, you know, affluent, don't have the means, don't have connections. And we really need to reach out to the philanthropic community and foundations to get involved with us. But if this works and it goes well, this could be the example for the rest of the United States and possibly around the world. That would be the dream. The staff and parents I spoke to all said the same thing. There's something special about this place. The children are not treated as patients, but more loved as family members. The very ethos that was set by St. Elizabeth Seton over 200 years ago. And now their dream is to give that same love and care to more children and young adults. She's having a little snooze at the moment. Sophie does that, she tunes out. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You are awake the whole time. Mm. She loves this place, it's like home, yeah. You like it, Kevin? Yeah. For Stephanie, beautiful Stephanie sitting here in front of me, what are your hopes and dreams for the future? Hopefully, you know, one day, get married someday. Not now, but l later in my life. When the time is right. When the time is right. And when you meet the right person. And when I meet the, the, the right guy. It's a beautiful dream to have, isn't it? At the moment, I take one day at a time. In Yonkers, New York, Cullum Flynn for EWTN News In Depth.